what is going on everybody and welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin and today we're going to be talking about the gigantic amount of cuts that the Red Sox made this weekend. I believe it was on Sunday. It was actually the biggest one that they've made so far. They sent a ton of guys down from the major league spring training roster to the minor leagues and a lot of them were pretty usual guys. Guys that it makes sense that they went down. There was no reason for them to be on the team anymore. Just get them down to the minor leagues, let them practice and work on their craft. But there were a couple of guys that ended up on this list that kind of surprised me. And yes, I know all of you are thinking Jaron Duran, and we will talk about him. But there were some other guys, too, that I was kind of surprised to see go down to the minor leagues this early. As always, though, before we get into that, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button. We have passed 700 officially, which means we are in the final stretch of getting to 1,000 subscribers. So make sure you guys are helping out if you're new here. Also, make sure that you guys are liking these videos as well as they help out the videos a ton. Thank you all for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. So like I said, before we get to Jaron Duran, I do want to talk about a couple other guys who I'm surprised to see on this list. And I know that it's a shortened spring training, but I was just expecting these guys to at least make it to the end of spring training before getting optioned. The first player I want to talk about is Roberto Ramos. Now, Roberto, if you guys don't remember, was a player that was signed during the lockout who was signed from the Korean Baseball League. Um, and this was a guy who was a super big power hitter. He had some success in minor league baseball in America, never really made it to the big leagues. So myself and I think a lot of people in the comments as well kind of expected Roberto Ramos to be a depth piece for the Red Sox and make that opening day lineup. Now, what could have happened to have him option so quickly? There were two things that stuck out to me. The first was the Travis Shaw signing. Travis Shaw is an experienced bench bat for the Red Sox. He can play first and uh, third. He can play a little bit of the outfield if he absolutely needs to. So getting Travis Shaw, in my opinion, hindered Roberto Ramos's chances at getting onto the Red Sox bench a lot. They already have that kind of guy. They're paying um, Travis Shaw more. So it makes sense why he would be kind of stuck in the minors for a little bit. The other reason is because he had a really poor outing in spring training so far. He is just one for 12 with a 100 batting average. So it's not like he's lighting the world on fire and you have to keep him in the majors to improve your team. So in all in all, this move makes sense. It's just surprising to me that the Red Sox go out and spend money on this guy. And I think a lot of us expected him to be at least a depth piece for the Red Sox. Who knows though, maybe Travis Shaw kind of stinks it up this year and they swap positions because I would like to see what Roberto Ramos could do at the major league level. The second guy I want to talk about is Ryan Fitzgerald. Fitzy, as you would say. Um, he has officially been optioned as well. And this is another guy who I didn't expect him to be on the major league roster come opening day. But I'm just surprised they made this decision so quickly with how well he's doing during spring training. Now, I know spring training isn't an absolute 100% indicator at how well a guy is going to be during the year. But it's a little bit more than just him smacking home runs. It's the way that he approaches at bats, in my opinion. I said in one of my videos where I talked about guys who are impressing me in the minor league. And Fitzgerald was one of them because of the way he's approaching at bats. It's a big league approach to at bats and it's leading to a lot of good offensive production. So I'm just a little surprised that Fitzgerald is already being optioned down and not waiting until the end of spring training to at least make a decision. So I, again, I didn't expect him to be on the major league roster, but I'm just surprised they did it so soon. Now let's get into the one you guys have all been waiting for. Let's talk about some of the reasons that Jaron Duran may have been optioned so early into spring training. Just to clarify real quick before we get into Duran, um, when I say that there's a ton of time left to cut these guys, I don't mean by physical days. I just mean that you've got time in between right now and opening day to let these guys play out the rest of spring training before you have to cut them. Um, so I just want to clarify that for anyone who's about to go into the comments and say, hey, idiot, opening day is in two weeks. Anyways, on to Duran. Duran officially got optioned down in this list as well. And initially, I was pretty shocked by this. I think a lot of us, especially me, was expecting Duran to break camp with the team and even possibly take over for Jackie Bradley Jr. pretty early on into the season. Obviously, that does not appear to be the case at the moment. Um, and I 
at first again i was pretty shocked but the more you look into it the more it kind of makes sense to me at least a little bit if you look at jackie bradley jr and jaron duran you can't exactly platoon the guys right well they're both lefties they both didn't do too hot at the plate last year although jackie bradley jr jr did significantly worse and jaron duran does have a higher potential ceiling for offense than jackie bradley jr does but either way their resumes at the plate aren't exactly the same but they're kind of close and then obviously jackie bradley Bradley's head over heels uh, above Duran in fielding, while Duran is head over heels to Jackie in base running. So it appears to me that the Red Sox decided to go with a fielding first player. They We don't have a lot of those on the team. It kind of makes sense. Um, you can plug him into that nine hole. However, in my opinion, Jackie Bradley Jr. is going to have one of, if not the shortest leashes in the MLB right now. If you get to late May, early June, and Jackie Bradley Jr. has played a handful of games at this point, and he is still hitting like 162 with one home run or something ridiculous like that. Um, I think Jackie Bradley starts to get pulled back a little bit, and Jaron Duran does come up at that point. But until then, they are going to go with Jaron Duran. One thing to point out is that Rob Ref Snyder or Christian Koss were not on the cuts already list. So they still have a chance at becoming an outfielder in a platoon situation with Jackie Bradley. And if that's the case, I don't know how much that affects Jaron Duran, if at all. Because to be honest with you, if Jackie Bradley Jr. is hitting terribly, but Ref Snyder is hitting well, and you still want to platoon him, you're probably still going to bring up Duran as opposed to having Ref Snyder in all the time. Let me know what you guys think of these cuts down below. Do you like them? Do you not like them? Were you surprised? Is there a guy on that list that you were surprised by that I did not go over? I want to hear your thoughts on that as well. So everything down below. As always, if you've made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button. Like I said, we are in the final stretch towards that 1,000 subscriber mark. Let's see if we can get there by the end of April. I also make sure you guys have hit that like button as well as these help out the videos a ton you wouldn't really expect it to but just by hitting that like button it really does help out the videos a lot so thank you all very much for clicking on this video and i will see you in the next one